This is the all-new Maruti Suzuki Desire. It's in its fourth generation now, and as you can see, it has been completely revamped. Looks nothing like the Swift, but it does share a lot with it. The engine, the gearbox, a lot of the interior, but it does get some exclusive Desire bits. And today we have it in beautiful Goa to see what it's like out on the road. Now the looks obviously the talking point on the Desire gone is the bulbous curvy look of the Swift and in place you have a sleek angular look for the Desire. It starts off with these horizontal LED headlamps that get some intricate detailing on the inside as well. You have this horizontal LED DRL and that gives it the look of a wider car. What also helps is the grille that is again nice and wide and these horizontal slats definitely do the job. Bumpers are nice and sporty, lots of cuts and angles so it looks the part and you have fog lamps housed in between. Now even though it looks like a wider car, dimensionally it still is just as wide as the Swift. Now over to the side, it's a sub 4 meter so 3995 mm of length but you also have 2450 mm of wheelbase which is the same as the Swift so no real improvement in legroom at least on paper. You have 163 mm of ground clearance. 15-inch alloy wheels with the same size of tyre as the Swift, but the design for the wheels is nice and new. What I also like on the Desire is the fact that this part right here, because it's not a Swift with a boot anymore, they've been able to redesign it and fit in well for the Desire, and that will also mean better room on the inside. Now at the rear, you have these contemporary looking tail lamps. You get a tri-arrow DRL inside as well and a lot of detailing. So it really goes to show the attention to detail Maruti has put in this. You of course get some chrome to satisfy the bling. You have a nice ducktail spoiler as well. And of course, because it's a desire, boot space is important. 382 litres, which is 100 litres more than the Swift. While it is over 100 litres more than the Swift with a spare steel wheel under the floor, it is in fact the smallest boot in the segment. The Tigor, Aura and Amaze all have boots measuring over 400 litres. Now even though the exterior doesn't resemble the Swift, on the inside is where you see a lot of part sharing. The steering wheel for one is lifted off, you have this power window switch gear as well. The dashboard layout is pretty much the same as well. But for the Desire, it's all new. You have a new 9 inch touchscreen, a Smart Play Pro Plus system. While it's Apple CarPlay, Android Auto part of the package, Suzuki Connect is built in there as well. But on this, you also get a tire pressure monitoring system and a 360 degree camera. What's also nice is the inclusion of a wireless charger. You have a USB-A port up front, two cup holders and a 12 volt charging socket. The new bit on the Desire, of course, is the sunroof. Now, it's not the biggest units, but it does the job, brings a lot of light and air. And speaking of light, you have this light upholstery that really uplifts the cabin, gives it a nice airy look. And you also see the same treatment on the dashboard. It's a dual tone layout, which breaks the floor, doesn't look monolithic. And that's nice. You have some fake wood sandwich between the two as well. So definitely gives it that sedan look, a bit of opulence, and that's always welcome. Seats are nice and comfy. Cushioning is very nice. You have a good amount of support as well. You also have USB charging here, a USB-A port and a Type-C port with some space to keep your phone. The instrument cluster is similar to the Swift with the analog dials, but on the Desire, you get a chrome ring around the speedometer as well. Unlike the Swift, which only gets it for the ref counter. That's the front. Let's quickly see what all is new at the rear. Now in the back seat of the all new Desire, because there has been no change to the wheelbase, space is not too different from the Swift. Knee room is just about enough and the back seat is good enough for two passengers. There are three point seat belts for three passengers, but only headrest for two. So three in the back will be a bit of a squeeze. You have AC vents in the back and the two ports can also be used by rear passengers as well. What's nice on the Desire is that this roof has been scooped out slightly. However, if you're over six feet, your hair will still end up brushing here. The backrest is at a decent angle as well and you get a center armrest with two cup holders. So overall, comfortable, but if you're over six feet, it's not going to be enough for you. Strangely, there is a single seat pocket behind the passenger seat with no room behind the driver's seat. The interior overall does seem to be larger and not cocoon like the dark interior of the Swift, courtesy the bright upholstery and bright colored panels all around.
The new desire was also crash tested by Global NCAP and has scored a perfect 5 star rating for adult occupant protection and 4 stars for child occupant protection, making it the first Maruti to get a 5 star G NCAP safety rating. The tests include a frontal offset crash test done at 64 kph, a side barrier test done at 50 kph, a side pole test and a pedestrian safety test as well. Clearly Maruti has done a lot to distinguish the desire from the Swift, but when it comes to the powertrain, they both are in the same boat. And that means it gets the same 1.2 liter 3 cylinder Z12 E engine, 82 horsepower, 112 newton meters and made it to a 5 speed manual and a 5 speed AMT. Now the latter is what we have first. AMT gearbox is never really smooth, not the best experience, but if anyone does AMT is better, it is Maruti and this is the most refined version they have. So if you drive it in a sedate manner, it's going to be no problems at all. in the city and in traffic it is definitely appreciated because you have a lot of stress taken off your left foot what's also nice on this amt is the responsiveness of the downshifting if the car is at fifth gear cruising around 60 70 kph if you push if you see an opportunity to overtake just a little flex and it drops down to third or even second in some cases and gives you that much needed torque that is what helps you gain those quick overtakes the engine is refined initially but ring it to the red line and you'll hear a lot more of that coarse three cylinder ness past the 4000 rpm now the amt gearbox also gets a manual mode all you need to do is just slot the gear in m and then take a bit more control it's not the most responsive but with a bit of patience you can definitely get a bit more engagement out of it That said, in D, it is nice and relaxed, and what complements the gearbox, of course, is the engine. Now we've seen the engine on the Swift, and of course, it's lost that swiftness of the older gen, but it still is nice and linear. You know, you don't really feel like it's a lethargic engine. It doesn't have that pep in the second half of the rev range, but from the bottom end, it is nice and responsive, and that is where you really appreciate it in city driving. in that 20 to 40 20 to 60 area that is when the engine has a good amount of pep to it while the needle does rev freely to the red line performance is gradual and you get a sense that this is not an engine you want to push especially with an amt but we also sample the manual to see if that helps the case for enthusiasts Now the manual gearbox on the Swift desires nice light clutch and quite progressive as well but if you're expecting this car to be fun to drive because it's a manual that's really not the case because the engine like i mentioned is quite linear power delivery is gradual so you never really get that oomph you expect and it's not a fun experience of course you have a bit better control over the power because the gearbox is not trying to upshift as soon as possible like the amt shifts are nice and light as well the gears slot in very easily and even in traffic it's not going to be too much of a pain because the clutch as i mentioned is very light but with the manual gearbox is where you feel a bit of that lack in power a bit more power would have definitely transformed this whole car in terms of the tune both the swift and the desire share the same gearing and engine mapping as well What's changed slightly is the suspension tune to compensate for the added weight for the desire. Ride quality is also very good. The suspension is nice and soft so bad patches, broken roads, Maruti knows exactly how they are in our country and the tuning is done in the same way. Despite the added weight and the added bit at the rear, it still feels nice and soft and given the soft seats, the overall comfort is quite good. And speaking on the handling the steering is nice and light again nothing really sporty about it tight corners you will have a fair bit of understeer if you push it but apart from that everyday maneuvering is very easy the steering feels fluid and consistent and tight turns are dealt with ease we couldn't do an efficiency test on a short drive but mauti claims 24.7 kpl for the manual and 25.7 kpl for the amt 
For those who want even more, Desire also gets the option of a CNG with the 5-speed manual gearbox which claims 33.7 km per kilogram. The full test figures will be out as soon as we get our hands on the car for a longer duration. Prices for the Desire start at 6.79 lakh rupees and go till 10.14 lakh rupees for the top spec AMT variant. The CNG starts at 8.74 lakh rupees for the VXI and 9.84 lakh for the ZXI trim with the manual gearbox. This makes it competitive against its rivals when it comes to manual versions, but the most expensive in the segment with an AMT. What Maruti has done with the new Desire is give it a new identity. With new sharp looks, added features, bright upholstery and the extra practicality, it has all the right ingredients to pull in the crowd and continue on as Maruti's best-selling sedan.